Hello again. In the previous video, we've learned timer and counter instructions. In this video, we'll use another counter type to how a down counter. Then, we'll use timer and counter instructions to improve this previous project. Sorting boxes based on their height. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Well, in the previous video, we've tested this program. Let's use the help window again. Now, let me select my PLC series. Because these addresses are a little different. As I said in the previous video, these counters can work in two directions. Also, these counters use a double word to save their current values. So, we need to use the DCNT instruction. Note that, these special bit memories can be used to change the direction of counting. Now, let's delete the previous counter, and insert a DCNT instruction. This instruction has two inputs. So, first, I determine a counter for the first input, and then, write a number for the second input. By default, this counter, C201, is an up counter. To change it to a down counter, let me use the first digital input, to change the state of M1201. Well, this bit is a special bit memory, and its comment has appeared automatically. Now, let me add comments to all used input-output addresses. Now, on the left side, let's select the device comment list. As you see, here, I can see all comments of inputs, outputs, and other addresses. These are comments which have been written right now, and these are comments related to special memory addresses. For example, let's find the M1201 address. Ok, based on the comment, when this bit is on, the related counter C201 will be a down counter. Now, let's compile the program. Ok, here is an error inside the last network. The new counter uses a double word instead of one word to save its current value. So, to compare it with another number, I must use another comparison instruction. That's similar to the previous one. I will explain comparison instructions in the next video. Let's compile the program again. Alright, there isn't any error or warning. Let me download it to my PLC. Now, let's go to the online mode, and then run the PLC. Let me press the first push button. Now, the counter value is increasing like the previous video. But there is a small difference. The counter value can increase, even its value reaches the defined value at the second input. 
Now, let me use the first switch, to change this bit memory, in consequence change the counter mode. Now, if I press the first push button, the counter value will be decreased. As you see, the counter value can be a negative number too. Now, let's do a practical project using factory I.O. software. Let's start with this system. That has been explained and also tested before. Now, let's add another diffuse sensor, with a lower height, below the previous one, to detect and count all boxes. As you know, we can click here to see or change each sensor name. Now I want to find and add a digital display. I will connect it to the counter value inside the PLC program. Now, let me right click on the inserted digital display, and under its configuration menu, select integer. Also. Let me add a reset button to my control box. I will use that to reset the counted boxes. Ok, another important point in this project is how a production line must be started or stopped. Usually, a production line starts to turn on devices from the last one, and stops them from the first one. By default, inserted removers and emitter are activated. Let me exit them from the force mode. Because I want to control them with the PLC program. My program must start removers and belt conveyor, and after 5 seconds, turn on the emitter. For the stop process, first, the emitter must be stopped, and after 15 seconds, which the belt conveyor has moved all boxes, PLC must stop the belt conveyor and also two removers. Now, let me test the final project, before explaining its PLC program. First, I use this mini switch to run my PLC. Now, let me press the start push button. As you see, first these devices have been turned on. After 5 seconds, PLC will turn off the alarm siren, and also, activate the emitter. Again, I used Kepsiver software to connect factory I.O. equipment to my PLC. Now, let me stop the production line. PLC has stopped the emitter at the beginning, and after 15 seconds, will turn off the belt conveyor and two removers. Ok, here I can see the number of all transferred boxes. Now, its value is 14. I can see this number on the related tag, inside the created OPC server. Let me change it to 0 with the reset push button, and then, start the line production again. Now, I must say a point. Note that, there is a little delay between my PLC commands and factory I.O. equipment, because of using the OPC server. For example, based on my program, when I press the stop push button, the emitter must be stopped immediately, but as you saw, the emitter hasn't stopped immediately and this box has been inserted. Ok, in this simulation, to ensure that there is no box on the belt conveyor, 
I can increase a timer time in my program from 15 to 20 seconds. Now let me explain my PLC program briefly. Note that, all used instructions were explained before. The first network save start stop requests from connected push buttons, or these push buttons inside factory I.O., on this bit of PLC memory. M10. Inside the second network, I've used two timers. PLC will activate the first one, T0, after each start request. The second timer will start, if I press each stop push button. The next network is related to removers. If PLC detects a start request, in another word, if this bit is 1, then PLC will turn on two removers immediately. Otherwise, PLC will turn off two removers after 15 seconds, when the second timer reaches to its defined time. The next network works like the previous network, but it has an extra condition to turn off the belt conveyor. When the first sensor detects a large box, the belt conveyor must be stopped, until the pusher push the box on the chute conveyor. With the same logic, PLC turns on and off the warning light, but without this extra condition, related to the first sensor. As you see, set and reset instructions are used together. If I determine some conditions to set an output, naturally, there are some conditions to turn it off. Note that, I usually use reset instruction after set. Because an electrical device that is off, is safer than when it's on. So, if both conditions are true to activate set and reset instructions, to turn on or off a specific output, PLC will work based on the last instruction. Let's continue. Based on this network, the alarm siren will be on, when PLC detects a start request, and the first timer time is less than its defined time. Note that, I used a simple coil instead of using set and reset instructions. So, when this condition is not true, the alarm siren will be off automatically. This network determines the condition, that turns on the emitter. The emitter will be on, if the start stop request bit is 1, and the first time reaches its time. Okay. This network is related to the pusher and was explained before, during the previous project. Let's go to the next network. As you see, I've connected the second sensor to this counter. So, it will count all boxes. After that, I've used the reset push button to change the counter value to zero. Note that, usually try to use a separate network for each output. Because PLC updates its all outputs, after the whole program is executed. Suppose, here is another network that includes some conditions to turn on the pusher, like this network. So, if this network decides to turn on or off the pusher, but the last network has another decision, PLC will work based on the last network, and this part of my program will be ineffective. Alright, as I mentioned before, I've used Kepsiver X software, to connect my PLC and factory I.O. software. I've explained how Boolean tags can be created before, but in this project, we need another tag type, to share the counter value with the inserted digital display. During the previous project, I used these Modbus addresses. In this table, we can find Modbus addresses of timers and also counters. I need the counter value, not its Boolean state. So. I need this address, related to the first counter, C0. Also, I must determine the data type. Now, the data type is not Boolean. The first counter uses a word to store its value. Note that, you can decrease the scan rate, to have a minimum delay to share data between your PLC and factory IO software. OK, let me activate the OPC server. As you see, the connection quality is good, and the current counter value is 11. Well, 
like the previous project, the next step is connecting factory I.O. to the created OPC server. After that, I can test the project, which was explained at the beginning of this video. I hope you have learned timer and counter instructions. In the next video, I'll continue learning other instructions, like comparison instructions. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.